you know, the idea of choice, it's really astrology is designed to create more consciousness. So you become more conscious of what's going on in your life, why it's happening, what you're being asked to learn. You know, it, it implies opportunity to learn and to grow, and it gives you major clues about what it is, in fact, that is, that, that is being offered to you. So how can someone use their chart or a reading of their chart to get some tools to have some consciousness and grow? Like, what do you do when you, when you um, do a chart? For, is it called doing a chart? Is it called something else? Or reading a chart? I don't even know the terminology there. Yeah, most of the time it's just called an astrological reading. Uh-huh. And, um, you know, if it's your first um, experience with astrologer, they'll do a natal chart for you, which is based on your birth time. And, and they will discuss with you your particular blueprint in this life. And you'll get, you know, a strong sense of, of, of what is possible for you mm-hmm. and what, you know, can occur for you. It, it's pretty interesting because most people, when they come in for an, a, a natal reading mm-hmm. and you start talking to them about their life and what the chart says, they'll mostly nod their head because it's sort of part and parcel to who they are. And, and so you're not usually telling anybody anything that's a great surprise to them. And then, you know, after you work with somebody with their natal chart for a while, um, you do a transit chart, mm-hmm. which, or a transit report, which is sort of like a weather report for the person for the coming year. Oh, okay. And we actually did that for you last mm-hmm. year. We did a transit report. And so you get to know your own personal astrology weather for the year that's coming, and it helps you to, to take advantage of of the good moments and be cautious of the more challenging moments. It's sort of like, you know, what clothes to wear, Uh you know, if you're going to have a rainy time, then you wear a raincoat. Mm -hmm. And if it's going to be sunny and beautiful out and, and everything's going your way, then you can really take advantage of that and plan the dream vacation. So it's kind of a tool to say, okay, this is coming up. This could be a really fruitful time to me for me to do these certain actions, or this is coming up, and so maybe I should um, kind of keep my focus in this direction and keep moving forward in, in a different way. Is right. Kind of the, right. Exactly. So I know that when I started um, learning a little bit more about astrology, um, what I so am so grateful for for astrologers like you is that when you do a full natal or transit chart you take into account everything, not just what would you call it, the right, rising sign? or Right, right. You know, you have a sun sign, a moon sign, a rising sign. Every planet has an astrological assignment. There's a house system that's at work in astrology. It's, it's really, you know, quite a science. It's very technically driven, data driven. One of the wonderful things about astrology is really it's an intuitive science and mm-hmm. it requires that you use your logical brain, your your left brain and your right brain, your intuitive brain and that's one of the things that I've loved about it just as a tool for my own personal growth and studying in astrology and becoming an astrologer. I it forces you to really develop your brain in a very balanced way. Yeah, to have both of those sides working at the same time. Mm -hmm. So in becoming an astrologer, did you study on your own? Did you have teachers? Did you use a combination of both? Well, mostly I was Mm self-taught just by reading books and by asking everybody their sign and just Mm -hmm. always sort of cataloging that astrological information. You know, like you said, you're a Libra. Well, I could name you know, 10 other Libras I've known in this life. And, uh-huh. and then I, I, you know, sort of make the, the connection to how all you Libras are alike and mm-hmm. in what way you're alike. So you can really learn a lot just by, by living mm-hmm. and paying attention, mm-hmm. which really always is the best teacher ultimately. And I've had, you know, I've taken a few classes along the way from, you know, different teachers, but I never had a 
teacher of astrology. And there's wonderful astrological books, you know, mm-hmm. all kinds of wonderful books that you can you can study. And of course, I have favorite authors, uh-huh. astrological authors. Who are some of your favorite authors? Well, Jeff Green is a wonderful uh-huh. writer. And Barbara Hand Clow is a wonderful writer. Those are my two favorites. So. Excellent. So were you one of those people going around going, hey, what's your sign? Oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> How long have sure. you been doing this, Howard? Well, I've been interested in astrology since I was a kid. Mm-hmm. My mother's a Scorpio, and she used to buy those little astrological books, oh, those yeah. predictions for the year, like uh-huh. those little dollar ninety-five Dell books. They have them at the checkout still. I yeah, think, do they? You, yeah, because I've, I've actually so, bought them a, a so time she, or So she used to to buy those and that made me aware that it was a subject Mm -hmm. and then of course you know I came of age in the 60s and Uh you know astrology really caught on in a big way in the 60s and we were all doing it we were all asking each other what your sign was Uh and you know all that good kind of stuff and you know I I guess it was part of my destiny to become an astrologer because you know I can still still tell you people's signs from you know, 40 years ago, and I might not be able to remember their name. So I just had an interest in the subject. Fantastic. And is there any um, particular story you remember about anybody's chart that was fascinating? Well, the truth is, is that I find the subject endlessly interesting, and I find doing everybody's chart interesting. It's like I get to know a person on a soul level, and I can do that without even having to meet them. That's cool. And so one of the real fun things is that oftentimes I will do charts for people I've never met, Mm -hmm. and then they show up. And so I get to sort of compare my um, idea of who they are with the actual person that shows up. And, you know, that's another thing that I would like to um, say about, about astrology is it's a wonderful tool, but it's not a religion. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not supposed to give your power away to it. It's just a way to explore yourself and um, a way to become more conscious of of who you are and what is possible for you in this life and to use it, you know, in in a positive, healthy way, but don't give your power away to it. If you go to an astrologer and they start telling you who you can and can't be and what can and can't happen and it doesn't feel good to you, you don't, you don't need to take it as absolute truth you know it's just information and i think that's one of the big misunderstandings about things like astrology Mm -hmm. and tarot and the various in uh, metaphysical arts is is that they're just tools for consciousness raising for transformation for growth they're not you know a religion Mm -hmm. you don't you don't need to take it that seriously Mm -hmm. and I take my work very seriously but we're all just humans and you know we just know what we know right so taking a look at at somebody's birth chart their natal chart um isn't like oh my goodness you're totally screwed you might as well just just not uh well this is a I'm glad you brought uh this up Brandy because oftentimes you'll see somebody who has a chart that looks easy and wonderful and because it's easy and wonderful, they um, aren't challenged enough in their life to really bring out the best in them. And then you'll meet somebody who has a very difficult chart. And most of the time, people with really difficult charts are the most compelling of all because they get challenged and it calls up the best in them and they develop you know, wonderful qualities of beingness and, Mm -hmm. and become great characters and, and it's become much more compelling human beings than people who have good charts, Mm -hmm. so to speak. So I'm wondering, because I'm a hypnotherapist and I do past life regressions and I talk a lot about karma with my clients and, um, things that they may be carrying over from another life. Do you believe or that the way that you're natally imprinted is because of karma you're bringing over and you're making that choice to be born at that time for the universe to imprint you that way? Absolutely, Brandy. Okay. That's absolutely what I believe in.